Thank you very much for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about another new feature that has been added to Sage 100 Cloud for version 2020, and that is the capability to be able to track expiration dates for inventory items that have lot or serial valuation. Let's take a look at our agenda. So the first thing we're going to do is look at some new inventory setup options, which in turn roll into new product line setup options, which in turn roll into item options. So we'll take a look at these things. Now the purpose of the expiration dates is to allow you to determine what lots to sell or serial items to sell based on those expiration dates. And they've introduced a concept called sell by date as well that we'll take a look at. Then we're going to go into purchase order receipt of goods entry and show you how to enter an expiration date during receipt of goods. And then we're going to show you how it works in sales order entry when we're doing lot and serial distribution. And then lastly, we're going to talk about a new utility that allows you to add or change expiration dates for multiple items. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at inventory options, product line options, and item options. So here we are in Sage 100 Cloud version 2020, and let's go into inventory management options. Now, when I go to the additional tab in inventory management options, you can see there's a number of new options that have been added that involve these expiration dates. So the first thing is if you want to use expiration dates on any lot or serial valued items, you must enable the feature. The second option is to ask you whether you want an expiration date required. If this is set, when you're doing receipt of goods via purchase order or inventory or bill of materials, you must enter an expiration date for that lot or serial number. Also, when you're selling the item, you will have to enter an expiration date, but obviously you don't have to have it be a required field. You can have the expiration date be a manual entry or, and or you can have the system calculate the expiration date for you. In my example here, I'm calculating the expiration date one month after the receipt date, so I've chosen months here as my option and select the number one. So again, one month after the receipt date. But you can see other options here. You can do number of days, months, years, or don't calculate it at all. Now, if you don't calculate it, it's fine. You can still manually enter an expiration date if that's what you wanna do. Next, we have some options around sell by date. So this is controlling when the item can be sold. So as an example, I've said, that I want to calculate my sell by date based on days. And I said 15 days before the expiration date. So you have an option to choose before or after expiration dates. And again, you can choose months or years or don't calculate it at all. Now, if you don't calculate a sell by date, it's just going to use the expiration date as the sell by date, which is perfectly fine. So again, this is completely up to you. The next option has to do with issuing the inventory items. So if it's issuing it to a finished good and bill of materials, you're just doing a standard inventory issue, then you can calculate a date there. And lastly, you can have control on when the item is being returned in RMA, whether it can be returned based on a date that's after or before the lot or serial expiration date. Let's go ahead and accept this. Now let's go to product line maintenance. And once this is set up, you set up a new product line, this will roll forward. But obviously if you already have product lines, you might wanna take a look at this. So as you can see in product line maintenance, there is now a new tab called lot serial, and you have the same options here for calculating these dates. And notice that they can be different than what the inventory setup options were. And then lastly, it's really the dates that matter is in item maintenance. So yes, you can set up the settings in inventory management options, which will roll into the product line and the product line can roll into the items, but it's really the items options that matter. So let's go ahead and call up our item. And if we go up to our dropdown, 
you can see we have a new option here called lot serial expiration. And this is what controls the lot serial expiration functionality for that particular item. So yes, we're going to track expiration dates. Yes, we're going to require it. And once again, I've said I'm going to have the sell by date be days and five days now before the expiration date. And I'm going to have the system automatically calculate the expiration date. So again, you can control this. Now remember, you have the capability in product line maintenance to apply those settings to all items. So you don't have to go through each individual item and set this up if that's not what you want to do. So you can always go to product line maintenance and apply the settings to all of the items in that product line. And you just have to go through that for all of your product lines. And again, this is just for lot serial items anyway. So the next thing we're going to talk about is receipt distribution. Now I'm going to do this in purchase order receipt of goods, but this could also apply to inventory receipt of goods or to bill of materials production entry if the parent item has lot or serial valuation. Okay, here we are back in Sage 100. I've already created a purchase order with a lot valued item on it. So we're just gonna go straight to receipt of goods entry. Go ahead and create my receipt number, select my purchase order, go the lines. And of course, it's gonna ask if I want to receive everything I order and I'll go ahead and say yes. And notice that we need to do distribution on this line. So let's go ahead and open up the distribution window and let's create a lot number. And we'll go ahead and receive all 10 cases here. Now notice the expiration date here. So remember our setup option for the item was to calculate the expiration date one month after the receipt date. So my receipt date is 5-31-25. So therefore my expiration date is 6-30-2025. But notice that you can open up the calendar and you can change that date. Let's go ahead and just receive that. Let's go ahead and accept this and print my receipt register. This is going to go to paperless office. And I just want to show you in paperless office, they've also added the expiration date on the receipt of goods register so that you can look back and see where it came from. So let's close that and go ahead and, and update the receipt. Okay, so this is the new feature that was added in version 2019 that's automatically printing and updating the daily transaction register. Okay, now that that's been received, let's go ahead and look and see how that looks in item maintenance. Okay, so we'll call our item up and we'll look at our cost detail for warehouse one. And you can see here that we have our lot number and there's our expiration date. So we did our receipt of goods, we added our expiration date. Now let me show you some items in warehouse 000. So we have all of these items that have expiration dates and they may have been blank, but they also could be changed. So one of the nice things about this is you can highlight a lot number and you can push this button and you can just simply designate a new expiration date. So if I wanna change that expiration date to August 1st, I can, and then it changes. So you can manually change the expiration date anytime that you wish via item maintenance. Okay, the next thing we're going to take a look at is the effect of those expiration dates from sales order distribution. Now remember, you can do sales order lot serial distribution either in invoice debt entry, it's actually required in invoice debt entry, but there's also an option to allow you to do the distribution in sales order entry, which is what I'm going to use here. So for those companies that have expiration dates and they want to sell specific lot numbers before they're shipped, this is a great feature. For example, if your business is drugs or produce or anything like that, where you have items that are going to expire, then being able to select the specific lot based on those expiration dates is a very cool feature. So back in Sage 100 Cloud, let's go to sales order entry 
and create a sales order. So I'll select my customer. Notice my ship date and my order date are the same here. And let's go to the lines and let's select our lot valued item. And let's go ahead and sell 10 of those. Now I have it set up here so that we can select our lot numbers during sales order data entry. So when I do a look up here, you can see what the expiration dates are for each of the lot numbers and you can sort by that column and you can choose the item with the earliest expiration date and start distributing there accordingly. So let's go ahead and do that. Now notice that it's showing me a sell by date. Now the sell by date is calculated during this data entry and it's simply looking at the expiration date and adding or subtracting the number of days, months, or years to that date has, as you defined it in item maintenance. In my case, if you remember in item maintenance, I said that we're going to subtract five days from the expiration date. Now notice you also can change the expiration date. And if I change the expiration date, it also changes the sell by date. So again, that sell by date is just a calculation. Now when you start using this feature, if items don't have expiration dates and you have designated in your inventory management setup options that the expiration date is required, you would have to select an expiration date on this screen. You would have to create an expiration date. If it's not required, you don't. So let's go ahead and select that lot number. So there we go. So the whole purpose of being able to use these expiration dates, I think, is to be able to track those expiration dates from sales order or sales order invoice data entry and to be able to select the lots that you want to sell first. Okay, the next thing we're gonna take a look at and the last thing we're gonna take a look at is a new inventory utility. This utility will allow you to assign expiration dates for multiple items. In inventory management in Sage 100, we can go to the utilities and you'll see that at the end of the utilities list is a new utility called change lot and serial expiration dates. So you can simply designate an expiration date that you want to assign and you can then say you only want to assign it to items that don't have any expiration dates, or you can choose a range or select items that have specific lot or serial numbers, specific warehouses, or specific expiration dates. So you can use this utility to change a specific expiration date to another specific expiration date but I'm going to go ahead and change all of my expiration dates just to show you how this utility works to August 31st. And I'll do it for all items. Now remember, this is only going to apply to lot and serial items. So let's go ahead and proceed. And I'll ask if I want to print a report before proceeding, I'll say yes. And it's a good idea to print this report to make sure that you understand the result of what you're doing here. So I'll go ahead and preview this report. And you can see I have a lot of items and it's gonna show me item by item, warehouse by warehouse, lot and serial numbers, and the old and then the new expiration date accordingly. So it's a good idea to review this report to make sure that you're getting the result that you want before you proceed. So let's go ahead and apply that. Now we can go look and see what the result of that is. So I'll go to item maintenance. I'll call our item up that we've been looking at. Go to cost detail and you can see now all of the expiration dates in all of the warehouses are all August 31st because that's the date I assigned. So this is a utility that can be used if you don't want to go into each item and lot number individually and change the expiration dates. You can use that utility to change the expiration dates for multiple items accordingly. Thank you very much for joining us again today. We really appreciate it. As a recap, we looked at inventory, product line, and item options. We did a purchase order receipt of goods and assigned expiration dates during the receipt. And then we showed you how to do sales order distribution for lot and serial items using those expiration dates and sell by dates. 
And then lastly, we took a look at an inventory utility to be able to assign expiration dates across multiple items, warehouses, and lot and serial numbers. Please subscribe to our channel. You can see here, our website is www.nimsassociates.com. Please go to our website for any latest information about these presentations. You can also contact NIMS and Associates at ERP at NIMSassociates.com or call us at the number on the screen. Once again, we want to thank you for your time.